before you blame or praise Tinubu for his um, first two weeks going on three weeks in office there are some things that we need to just ponder about some people are praising him they say he has done so much within a very short time things that no other president could do some people think otherwise now for those who think that he has done so well they reference things like removing fuel subsidy as an achievement and they reference uh, signing the electricity bill as an achievement they also reference signing the student loan bill as an achievement they reference the suspension of emirfele the suspension of bauer as an achievement they claim he has done so much and he should be hailed but before we go ahead to praise or blame him let's look at these things that he has done in proper context because for you to praise or blame a president or a government you need to consider what the president or the government has done now what is the primary responsibility of government it is the security and welfare of the people so if we're going to judge tinubu based on his first three weeks in office to determine whether he has done well or otherwise we need to check how has the welfare of nigerians fed in these past two going on three weeks of Tinubu's administration. So let me ask you, how is your welfare? How is your condition of living? Are you enjoying more than you were enjoying before? Are you buying things cheaper than you were buying before? Are you getting more money now than you were getting before? The number of unemployed persons is it dropping in the first three weeks these are the things that we need to look at to decide whether to praise or to blame tinobu now what is your answer let it not just be me talking how would you rate yourself regardless of who you supported for presidency i didn't support tinobu and i'm unapologetic about it but let's be objective in these first two or first three weeks of tinobu's presidency with what he has done with all the bills that he has signed, with all the subsidy that he removed, with the devaluation of the Naira in the name of unification of the FX window. You tell me, how is your condition of living? How is it? If it is better than before May 29, then go ahead and clap for Tinubu. But if it is not, then you are free to do whatever you want to do. Let me know in the comment section but for me this is how i view things there is an elite core in this country that has dominated american society the trilateral the commission council on, council on foreign relations well let's face it they have dominated the state department for 40 years and uh, pretty much openly all so. right but what are they trying to do council well their council? objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society a dissolving of sovereignty and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum well, who are the they belief the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers in the Council is the on Foreign Relations. Is the International Monetary Fund part of this? Well, I would say the International Monetary Fund has certainly been set up for the purpose of facilitating that transfer of sovereignty and transfer of wealth. You are looking at a group that has worked to bring about the dissolution of national sovereignty on the road to world government. I would go to countries with resources our corporations covet like oil. I'd arrange a huge loan to those countries from the World Bank or its sister organizations, but the money wouldn't actually go to the country. It would go to our corporations, Bechtel, Halliburton, Brown and Root, familiar names, to build big infrastructure projects in those countries and incidentally make huge profits in the process. They'd build power plants and industrial parks, things that would benefit a few wealthy families in the country, the ones that own the industries. But the majority of the people would suffer. They would be left holding a huge debt they couldn't repay. So we'd go back and say, since you can't pay your debt, sell your resource, oil or whatever, real cheap to our corporations. Privatize. Sell your utilities, your schools, your jails, everything like that to our corporations. And Claudine also told me that if the leaders of these countries refused my offer, people she called jackals would be right behind me. I didn't actually carry a gun, but the jackals did. All 
all the things that Tinubu has done so far, all of them indicate that Tinubu is starting on a wrong foot. Is starting on a wrong foot. And I'll tell you why. The Western powers led by America, followed closely by the UK and the EU, they have a strategy. And their strategy, I call it the colonial virus disease, mutation three. Colonial virus disease, mutation three. That strategy is targeted at keeping us dependent on them. That strategy of the U.S. through the IMF and the World Bank is targeted at making sure that African countries, and inclusive of Nigeria, are dependent on the West, on the Europeans, for goods. The, the strategy is targeted at making us consumers rather than producers. The, the strategy is targeted at making us remain in consumption rather than moving us to production. That is their strategy. And to bring about that strategy, they need three things from us. One, they want us to devalue our Naira so that they can spend less dollar to buy over more things from us. That's one. They want us to devalue our Naira. Two, they want us to remove, not remove, increase the pump price of fuel. And the excuse to do that is removal of fuel subsidy. They need that. That's number two. Number three, they need us to privatize. They need us to do what? Privatize. Now, each of these three things, Tinobu has served them on a platter of gold. Many people look at the electricity bill and they clap for Tinobu, but I look at it and I weep for Nigeria. Why do I weep? Now, the electricity bill has granted private individuals the freedom to generate electricity, right? And determine price. The freedom to generate electricity and determine price. Now, let me ask you, how many individuals in Nigeria can generate their own electricity? You answer that. But I will tell you quickly that only those people who have backings of these so-called multinationals, international companies who will bring in the dollars to buy up or, or create those companies, only them can generate the electricity. And of course, they will sell it to you at the price at which they will maximize their profit. So what has that done? It will increase your cost of living. So what you are seeing as an addition is not necessarily an addition. If that will create 100,000 jobs, it will kill 1 million jobs. So the net of it is going to favor the western countries that are going to provide that electricity generation infrastructure which is what they want privatization we gave it to them with that electricity bill that's one number two they wanted increase in pump price of fuel and we served it to them in the name of fuel subsidy removal now i am not in support of the fraud that was going on in the name of subsidy. What I stand for is this. Yes, there was subsidy fraud because really there was no subsidy. What could Tinubu have done? Tinubu could have opened the veil and looked into the fraud that was called subsidy and made those people who have been fraudulently defrauding Nigeria for the past years to pay back what they have stolen and recover those monies that he can use to activate Ajakuta steel, activate Alaja steel, set Nigeria rolling industrially on the path to industrialization, create minimum of 10 million jobs. That's what that would have done for us without the need to increase the pump price of oil. Now, many people argue that, oh, the fuel of Nigeria is cheaper than that of our neighbors. That is uh, encouraging smuggling. Hello? Nigeria is not the cheapest seller of fuel in Africa. Egypt sells for cheaper than us. Angola sells for cheaper than us. Libya sells for cheaper than us. Even Algeria sells for cheaper than us. And they are not so far from Nigeria. 
So if those countries sell fuel cheaper than Nigeria, how come their petrol is not being smuggled from their country into Nigeria? How come? How come they don't have problems of their petrol being smuggled out to their neighboring countries? How come it is only Nigeria? Despite the fact that Buhari's administration claimed to have spent 50 billion naira on software to track fuel tankers. That software, we did not see its implementation and we did not see the money. So when the subsidy thing came, many people did not know that that fuel subsidy removal that is actually increased in the pump price of fuel was meant to favor Dangote refineries. And there are people who argue that Dangote refineries will create jobs. Really? Okay, let's say Dangote refineries creates 100,000 jobs. Do you know how many jobs that Dangote refinery will kill? And I'm not the only one saying it now. Millions of jobs. At the end of the day, who will it favor? All the steel that you require to manufacture refineries, they come from outside. So we will still be dependent on the West. And at the same time, paying through our nose for fuel that we could produce locally. So the first subsidy removal is a number two item that... Tinobu gave to these Western countries, these Western powers, on a platter of gold, rather than choosing the part that will favor Nigeria. Now, the third one is the devaluation of the Naira. The Western powers, they want this, because if they spend their $1 billion, they can buy a lot more things with a weak Naira. No country that is not a producing nation devalues their Naira. Look, America has grouse with China. America has grouse with Japan. Do you know why? Because China devalued their currency against the dollar. Japan devalued their currency against the dollar. Why? Because they produce. And what does that mean? It makes them more competitive than America. So the jobs were going from America to China, going from America to Japan. And America didn't want that. So America was complaining that China was illegally devaluing their Naira. We are not a producing country. They are angry that China is devaluing their currency. Japan is devalu devaluing their currency. Meanwhile, they are encouraging us to devalue our currency. Ask yourself why. It is because they stand to benefit. Because they know that we are a consumption economy, not a production economy. Because they know that that way they can keep Nigeria dependent on them. And then, of course, the cost of living, the condition of living will increase. The cost of living will increase. The condition of living will reduce. They are happy. Their corpor uh, corporations get to gain and we get to suffer. Those are the three things that Tinubu has done. If you now consider the fourth one, which is the student loan. Many people are rejoicing for this. I don't see why. The student loan for me, if you look at the section of the bill that creates the um, student loan bank, you'll see that it's another opportunity for Tinobu to take our collective patrimony and give it to his few friends. How do I mean? That law enables the government to collect 1% from FIRS customs, immigrations, um, oil companies and the likes, 1% 1, 1 from them. What does that do? That's in addition to the laws or to the taxes they're already paying. So what happens? Those companies will increase the cost of their goods. Who bears the extra? The people. Meanwhile, these monies that are collected from these companies are taxes for the subsidy loan. How many people can access it? Now, the maximum limit, family income, is 500000 which means if you have a father that earns 30000 and you have a mother that earns 30000 put together, that is 60000 a month, and in a year, that is 720000 naira. That means that that family cannot access the student loan. They cannot access it. Now, add on top of that the fact that if, okay, you, your family income is less than 500000 naira, you are only entitled to school fees portion of the loan. And if you look at it, if you do an analysis, the bulk of the spending is in your accommodation, is in your feeding, your clothing, your health, and all of that. There is the, the student loan does not cover that. So at the end of the day, invariably, 
the student get nothing because this money is not paid directly to the student it's paid directly to the school at the end of the day the school that you need so much money to go to you will still need so much money because it's not only school fees that is a component of education at a higher institution level then if you think about it the conditions are there that after you finish two years maximum you start paying back meanwhile there are no jobs so i don't understand why you are clapping for tinubu right now i am not criticizing tinubu because I didn't vote for him i'm criticizing tinubu right now because i am looking at his policies and i am seeing danger look at the policies again and look at who the policy really favors it is the west and they're already starting to come they're coming to claim the gate is scheduled to come on monday now they're coming to claim we already know that one company called iibdg is reported to own 70 percent of dangote refineries dangote oil refineries company hello are you reading the handwriting on the wall so before you praise or blame tinubu look he is president he is president my prayer is that maximum by august 31st we will get a ruling that will restore the mandate of peter obi now if push comes to shove and that doesn't even happen the truth of the matter is, we cannot just sit idly by and watch as we are sold into slavery. Because that's the aim and the objective of these Western powers through the IMF, through the World Bank. And that's what they wanted to achieve with the three things that Tinubu has just served them. And yet, we are clapping for him while he's selling us into slavery. I will not be a slave in this century, not in 2023, not beyond. What about you? Think about it. This is beyond just supporting or attacking Tinubu. This is for Nigeria. This is for Africa. I'm calling on you to join the League of Patriots today. Let's resist this slavery 3.0 that they're trying to bring upon us.